Do you want me to get shirtless? I can get naked. You don't even know I'm not even wearing pants. Yeah, that, that, that's for the that's for the thumbnail. <laughs> Welcome back to the Athletes Corner Podcast. I'm Sebastian, and today I'm joined by Carson Roberts. Um, some of you guys may be new. It's going to be the first episode we put on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, as well as just YouTube, uh, which was traditional for the Athletes Corner. Today, obviously, we're going to take as much knowledge as we can from Carson. He is a current Division One baseball player at UIC in Chicago. Um, my former teammate, one of the best humans I've been around, and fortunate enough to call my friend, um, killing it this season, batting 333 at this point, probably higher now by the time this comes out, uh, with a 463 on base, <laughs> three bombs, and a thousand fielding percentage, which is amazing. I completely expect. I mean, I, n- no shock here, but you know, love to see it. So, <laughs> so great job so far your first season playing at this level. So it, obviously this is your first season. You're a junior now. Um, things change. Things happen from high school till now. So we'll go over that entire journey, what happened from then till now to get you to where you are. Um, so starting off out of high school, how was recruiting for you? Obviously you had been some type of a baseball player to get to where you are now. So how was that coming out of high school? Was that difficult? Was that What were the options you don't have to name schools but like was there many options was there little options what made you decide to go where you went so actually recruiting is was super tough and i'm sure it's super tough for anyone but like out of high school junior year like my junior season stats terrible i was a terrible high school player it is probably the hardest baseball i've ever played i probably batted a 215 maybe had like three home runs just it was a rough year and that is so hard to believe by the way but keep going not at all <laughs> not at all no and and you go to these showcases and you start seeing familiar faces you start getting to a routine where i do a dynamic stretch together you run the 60 you do like outfield velos infield velos batting practice and get you like your yeah, exit velos they take video you start getting that routine but i really didn't have much schools looking at me and it was more just like the way how i just i went about my business very professionally but like people would see like how i throw it's awkward i know i'm an awkward human but <laughs> you if you try to say hey like just like trust me and then they like look at your high school stats they're like you're banging like 215. That's you don't really have a whole lot of uh, legitimacy. So was, I went the JUCO route, went to Mesa Community College. Hold on, hold on, and that on. place definitely so, humbled hold on, me. Hold on, hold on. So you, so you, you're saying obviously out of high, like during high school, you struggled a little bit. You're saying it's the hardest baseball you've played, but you've always been an athlete, right? Like that hasn't been an issue. Like coaches oh, have yeah. to have seen, right? Like you've always been that type of an I, athlete i was and always I, like, like a bigger body i was always a bigger body yeah. just i'm not very quick as you know from playing with me not very quick not slow very, <laughs> it, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> i is very strong in the weight room i could i could push some weight it had numbers mm-hmm. to back that up but Mult, multi-sport some, athlete correct oh yeah quote unquote uh i was <laughs> Not the star of the bowling team, but I was the second star as we only had two players on the bowling team. <laughs> so, awesome. yeah, I went to regionals for bowling. Don't have a trophy to show it, but it is true. <laughs> so I do get to call myself a multi-sport athlete. But, um, yeah, I mean, the athleticism was there, but I didn't have any numbers to show it off, I guess. Okay. So then you went to Arizona, correct? That's where uh, you went to community college? Mesa Community College, yes. Okay. And how did how did that go? Because obviously we'll get to what happened after that, but how did that experience turn out? And then what led you to where you went next? So it was 2020, and that was the COVID year. So they shut down our entire fall. And so I got to stay home, got to, you know, rekindle the light with the uh, with the girlfriend. So that was, that was <laughs> probably a... a a plus on that I even wasn't even aware of, but that I am very thankful for. But as soon as I got there, 
uh, we, one of the first days of practice, we had hitting groups, and I didn't see my name on the list. And I'm like, oh, like I went to our head coach Tony Sorelli. I was like, oh, like hey Skip, like which group do we want me to go in? He's like, ah, we don't really see you as a hitter. We see you as a pitcher. And you know from playing with me, I am not a pitcher. I am. I totally terrible. forgot about the fact that you were a two-way. Everyone does. So Everyone does. I am so bad at it. And they're like, yeah, we're going to try you on the mound. And I was just like, ah. after that day of practice, I talked to him in the parking lot. And I was like, you know, I I, I don't agree with you. I am sorry. I am not a pitcher. You, you have to try me in hitting. He's like, I... Don't see you getting any starts in the outfield. No starts at DH. I don't think you will play it at all this year. And if you want a red shirt, you can. And I was like, just give me an opportunity. Just give me an opportunity. Just put me in an inner squad. Just let's see how it goes. Sure enough, very first inner squad game, he has me leading off. Nerves are going. First two at bats. Flyouts, they're they're hit decent. They're mm-hmm. they're flyouts at the end of the day. So 0 for two. Third at bat. Side note: If you messed up at all, like something mental, anything mental, they would have you run a sled. And the sled was a big old 1960 sled that had two 45 pound pound weights on it, and you had to run it 200 feet. Messed up on the base path, had to run it. Got my name. I got my name called again. Had to go bat right, right away. No warm ups. No nothing. Oh, so you you do this when you mess up. You're doing this then. Yes, yeah, so you're doing it like in the inner squad. That's crazy. So they like. But I would in... like to applaud that coach. You asked for an opportunity, and he just said, "Sure, take it." That's, yes, that's that's surprising. Yes. That doesn't just happen usually. He 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 would like I said he was definitely a hard. Ass. He. I, I'm sure he definitely applauded. He's like, hey, this kid has balls. He's trusting himself. Let's see how it goes. He he doesn't he's not he's not asking for a starting spot. He just wants the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Sure enough. I get done running my sled, go straight to the box. Straight to the box, no batting gloves. They give me a helmet. <laughs> First pitch, home run over the scoreboard. Look at that. <laughs> so and also if you hit a home run, you had to go get the ball because we were limited on ball. So I hit right off the bat. I knew it. I didn't even touch first base. I just ran straight to the outfield to go get the ball. I wouldn't <laughs> be on the fence. Go get the ball. Got it. In there. And uh, yeah, and then they started looking at me and like, they're like, all right, he can play. He can play. He might get a start or two, but uh, hurt my ankle. It's out the first two weeks and then didn't really see any starting time until the first game of playoffs. That was probably one of my more uh, serious starts other than like the JV games that we play. Mm-hmm. So obviously that's a completely different experience than I would say even your being on your team last year and then obviously where you are now. Like there's no way that's anything similar at all in terms of like what's going on. I mean, baseball is baseball, but it's different. Yeah. So – um, again, I, I think that's, that's cool. That's, that's awesome that you had the confidence in yourself to be like, Hey coach, like he, he said you're, he basically said you're a PO and you're like, no, like I, you get, at least give me an opportunity. That's awesome. He gave you the opportunity and you killed it. You hit a home run in your third at bat. Like with all that pressure, obviously you said you were tired from running that sled. Like yeah. that's, that's, that's impressive. And that has to show them like, Hey, this kid's legit. Not only did he have the confidence, he backed it up so he can play under pressure. And then, then he gives you the opportunity in the playoffs when knowing you can handle that pressure. So how did that turn out? Did you end up playing the entire playoffs? It was a one game thing. How did that? It was a one game thing. Uh, went one for four, uh, in my, so through, so I pinched it throughout the entire season. I was like the go-to pinch hitter and didn't I only had one strikeout through I think thirty three at bats. So they're like, hey, if we need a ball in play, Roberts is the guy. So mm-hmm. so constantly I was getting in probably twice a week because we were playing a lot of close games. So it's a uh, JUCO baseball in Arizona, like I said, very very competitive, very mm-hmm. close game. So anything that they like, so they'll do anything to win. 
So eighth inning, I'd come in, pinch hit. I might play defense, which is surprising because if you ask the guys at UIC, they're like, who's your best defender? They're not going to say me in the Um, slightest. The the stat book uh, doesn't agree with that. Which is hilarious. I love that. I (laughs) love that. In the fall, I... The fall at UIC was one of the worst defensive falls I've ever had. And I will openly admit that. All the coaches here would admit that. Teammates, yes, it was bad. It but, was but, bad. But at the JUCO level in Arizona, I would say, you, like, you're an athlete. Like, you can play the outfield. Like, obviously, you're catching. You're not dropping balls. You I, Like, I would always say to guys on our team last year, I'm like, I know if the ball's hit uh, in in his direction and he's near it, he's gonna catch it. Like it's not gonna be like a dumb mistake. Um, but okay, so maybe you're not gonna make a diving catch over the wall, like full sprint, like something like that. Maybe you're not gonna do that. But I thought you were one of the more sure-handed outfielders we had last year. But I, I want to talk to you about being a pinch hitter because that's not easy in itself. I think a, a lot of the things I'm learning, uh, talking to you now, and I think everyone watching this should take is you're very mentally strong because the whole take, give me my opportunity thing. That's a big, big deal. Get the opportunity perform. And like you said, 30 at bat, something only one strikeout as a pinch hitter, like pinch hitting isn't easy at all. That's like, nobody wants to be a pinch hitter. Like that's, that's hard. You want your at bats when you can get them. So like you'll take that, but But, pinch hitting is not easy at all. Like, could you walk us through how you would go about your at bats, how you mentally prepare for them? And then, just how the, how that whole type of new way of hitting for you ended up. Because I'm sure in high school you weren't an everyday pinch hitter. You were a starter. Uh, I was a starter in high school. Um, and I'd say this to anyone that is pinch hitting. The coaches have trust in you to put you in a do-or-die situation. That automatically should put confidence in you. If you don't already have confidence in yourself, which is probably the biggest thing. That is the biggest thing with pinch hitting is a mentality of I have people behind me that know I can get this job done. Right. The second thing is be aggressive. You're given this opportunity. You didn't get the opportunity to start the game, but you have the opportunity to end it or at least give your team a chance to win. Right. You don't want to go up there and just look at three pitches and then sit back down. And that goes into my next point. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. There's probably a guy on second or third, might be one out, might be two outs, whatever it is. Be aggressive. Get your pitch. Have an approach. Get your pitch. Don't miss it. Swing as hard as you can. Right. So taking all that you learned from your first year in community college, how that differed from your last couple years in high school, what sort of led to your decision to come back home um, continue the JUCO route, but change schools. Was that for a playing time situation? Did you not think you were going to get playing time in that next year? Well, how did how did that decision come about? Same reason I had talked to my head coach. I had confidence in myself. I knew I was bound for bigger and better things, and I knew that he wouldn't wasn't going to give it to me. I knew I worked my ass off. I would show up two hours before practice. I'd work on defense, hitting whatever it was that he wanted to get, wanted me to work on so I could be in the starting lineup. So I was like, I'm going to take everything I learned from Mesa and I'm going to transfer it to whatever school I'm going to. I didn't know what school I was going to initially. Uh, Pat Leahy, the outfield coach that coached me a little bit in, and I say a little bit with asterisks too, in high school reach out and he's like hey like are you looking to transfer like you're not getting a whole lot of at bats would you want to would you want to maybe play for college dupage uh i thought about it and i was like you know what like let's do it like i get to stay home i get to see the girlfriend you know (laughs) cod has a has a great record let's go for it and then i met with head coach bobby wilson and immediately i loved him and like, I knew that automatically he had the trust in me. The trust that I wanted from my Mesa coach, he, he right away had that trust. So when you came, when you were during that season, was it, I'm, I have a feeling it wasn't, I'm trying to find a way out of here. I've, I've, knowing you, it's 
I'm trying to figure out how next year I'm on the field every day. What can I do to get on that field every single day? It wasn't, oh, let me look around for opportunities. I have a feeling that's kind of how it went with you. Is that the case? Looking for opportunity? Right. So, like, during the season, were you always trying to figure out another school? Like, were you, like, knowing you were going to transfer and being like, I need to find another school? Or was it, like you said, Leahy, after, after your season being like, hey, would you be interested in this? And then you're like, sure. It was more of a Leahy reached out to me. It was a last-minute thing. I was planning so, on So your plan was to office. come back. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. The opportunity presented itself. Shout out Leahy. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> he, he saved me. He was like a, a little guardian angel for me. Uh, shout out to the Wabonzi coach, uh, Rodney Lopez II. Uh, much love for the dude. He, throughout high school, he always kept an eye on me, got me on this really good travel team. Uh, and he I, he just asked a little bit too late, but uh, much love for Wabonzi. Assistant coach, Rodney Lopez. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> so, okay. So now Leahy dragged you into City. Thank God he did that. Um <laughs> So that changes everything, right? Like, that's that's huge. That's the difference between you being in Illinois versus being in Arizona, one Mm -hmm. team versus another. Like, completely different types of baseball in the in the warm weather versus the cold weather. I'm sure that had something to do with your decision. But I'm sure the fact that the confidence that you were looking for from the coaches towards yourself had to have had the biggest factor in you coming to COD. Is that correct? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, and. Something I appreciate when I was talking with the COD coaches, and this should go for anywhere, if for anyone recruiting, is they shouldn't be just handing you a starting spot. Right. If they're saying, hey, you're going to start here, run away. That is a mm-hmm. huge red flag because they can guarantee that. No right. way they can guarantee that. You could have the worst fall in the world and you're expecting to start. No shot. Right. And if they're going to say that to you, odds are they're saying it to someone else. Exactly. So exactly. It's, that's not a good start at all. It, it, it's that That's a mix for disaster. But mm. they're like, hey, we'll give you an opportunity. Uh, we're looking for a right fielder. You know, we know you have the arm strength. We know that you can hit. Let's just see where it goes. And on the side, pitch a little. I was going to say, but, pitch a little bit, too. <laughs> just pitch a little. Uh and yeah, I, like I said, would show up to practice. I was, uh, I would say for a while, I was just really quiet. You know, it was a new team. Uh, I was kind of rotating through teams all throughout high school. Like I said, I was jumping through travel teams. You know, this in my eyes, it was just another team, another new group of faces. That's so always I didn't been want interesting. To get too close. Yeah, that's always been interesting to me because. Myself, I've been around kids that have played on a million different travel teams. Um, there's kids that have been on seven different colleges. It's like, for me, I played on the same travel team for like eight, ten years or something. And it was just that loyalty thing for me back when I was however old. They were the team that wanted to, me to play for them. Yeah. So I played for them. We weren't good. And eventually it got to the point where everyone wanted my talent and my brother's talent to play for them the same teams that didn't want us before and i'm like absolutely not like i'm gonna stay loyal to these coaches in this organization that trusted me back then so but regardless some situations don't work out whatever i've just never been a part of a situation where it was one team to the next to the next so that's always been interesting to me do you think that sort of can help you in a way the fact that you're seeing different coaches giving you different uh hitting advice, pitching advice, whatever, um, life advice even, or just being around a different group of guys that can maybe motivate you to work harder every year. I have to fight for this spot even more than I would have if I'm staying on the same team. Do you think that maybe that had a certain role into where you are now? Do you you think that the fact that you switched one team to another sort of helped you become a better baseball player? Or 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 is it not at all? Like a total question. Yes and no. You, like I said, there's, I would say throughout my life, there has been very few teams where it's been very selfish, where everyone was just kind of there to get paid. 
with Mesa and COD, there is a culture of everyone is playing to win, which I love. I love mm -hmm. that. But the way they go about it is different. And so it's kind of like a buffet of you get to pick and choose of what you want to kind of bring on later into the future. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I would take like, I would take like a, a losing is not an option mentality from Mesa. I'd bring it to COD, and then I pick and choose, pick and choose something from COD, and I'd bring that to UIC. Okay, so you're sort of saying like, it it, it sort of builds on to you, and maybe you can build on to another team's culture, but it yes. doesn't necessarily it's like have a it's full. Snowballs. Right. Okay. Th that makes sense. I want to ask you, so obviously good season at COD. How did the recruiting with UIC go about? Because we had a real talented team, a lot of good players, um, and obviously you were one of those best players. How did that come about? I know now we have another player going to UIC from COD because COD is just a uh, <laughs> just, just that uh, feeder school for UIC apparently. Um, but, yeah, so how did that go about? Because that's how, uh, Division One recruiting you is a whole lot different than a community college being like, "Hey, come play for us." It, it is a different process, a little more rigorous process. But uh, I was actually talking to talking about this to my roommate in at Valparaiso in the hotel. Every year, at some point, I always say to myself, and I say to my loved ones, "This is my last year." I am done with baseball. So Mesa at COD it even happened where there's that breaking point of I love the game, but I know I'm not great enough to play at the next level. For me at COD, it was, me. at COD, I remember we were, it was November. We were playing at Triton, played the worst game of my life, embarrassed myself. And I that night I was like, this is it. I I am going to be a commercial roofer for the rest of my life. And I'm I'm happy with that. I'm going to get married to the love of my life from high school, where I have family, and that's that. Stop focusing on baseball. Just play this year out, best you can. Like Harris on fire. There's no way that lasts though. With your confidence and your work ethic, there's no way that lasts. Oh, it lasts as long. <laughs> it lasts as long <laughs> until someone gives you an opportunity okay. so like I, throughout the uh spring season of cod i was playing like it's my last and all of a sudden uic no uic reaches out and they're like hey you know you have a skill set that can help us win and that that was kind of what i was looking for obviously i was still team oriented where it's like that that's really cool and trust me i'm i'm very honored for this opportunity but like i still have to have my team right now win and so obviously i i uh, would say almost right away took the offer from uic and then kind of forgot about it because i'm still focused on cod because i'm i'm here right right so we, we gotta win we gotta go as far as we can which is why you deserve every opportunity you get. Like work ethic and everything, you get that offer. I and mean, a lot of people could be like, "Oh, well, I'm done now. Like I'm moving on to better things." And all the guys around me, no, you didn't do that. You kept working hard. You kept early morning lifts, putting up 500 pounds on your back every day. Like, it, <laughs> like you kept doing your thing, which is which is awesome to see, and it's awesome to see the things you continue to do. So I want to ask you, what was your best experience or memory from? juco baseball if you don't have any i can give you two right now my favorite memories of you <laughs> oh <laughs> at god COD. on field or off field whatever I have, tat you... I have tattoos from mesa that uh are with me for life um <laughs> i would probably say this so at mesa one of the things that we had to do was a six minute mile we everyone on the baseball team had to run a mile in under six minutes. That was that mandatory. Huh? So we should do that at COD. Oh my God. <laughs> We'd lose it, half like, our roster. <laughs> well, it, so something I learned was running a mile in six minutes is 
nothing physical. It's all mental. Zero percent physical. It is all mental. Hundred percent. As though, so as you get into the third and fourth lap, the effort level has to increase, and the only person and the only way to do that is for yourself to push just a little bit harder. That I have that has stuck with me throughout my entire college career. I think I think you're where you're at because of your mentality. Straight up. Everything that you've been saying now, like to you seems super obvious and like common sense, right? And to some people that's how it seems and that's why people get to where they are. But some people that that's not just there for them. So that's the, I think that's definitely where you why you are where you're at. Like you said, six minute mile. Most people would look at that and be like, absolutely not. Like if they knew that coming in, they'd be like, Well, I'm not even gonna try. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, totally. So, but it still, it was still learned. I didn't want to say I was an arrogant f- going into college, but I probably was. Like, I mean, <laughs> definitely was a little bit cocky. I felt like I had done something going and be like, oh, I'm in the number one JUCO region in the States. And I really didn't do anything. I, mm-hmm. I got I, all I was given it was an opportunity. Right. So okay, so what the memory? I want to know about these tattoos. What made you get? What made you get these tattoos? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I want to say next question, but uh, <laughs> definitely a, a fun Friday night, a very fun Friday night. <laughs> so okay, so I like I said before, I have a couple things I want to mention, being my favorite memories of you. So for, one of the first days of the fall, we had uh, batting practice, right? And it's cold. It's uh, maybe it wasn't one of the first days of fall if it's cold. I don't know. But it was cold. It was in the fall. I know that. Um, and we're taking normal BP. And then af- after practice, we had to do, like, situational stuff, either laying down a bunt, hit and run. If you don't get it, it's a sprint or whatever. And you're the last guy up. I, I hope you remember this. So you're I the last guy up. It. And we're sitting back there. Keep in mind, like, wind never goes out to right field at CUD, first of all. And it's cold. And... I don't think a single kid hit one out, and we had some power bats on our team. <laughs> and and uh, Coach Wilson goes to you, you're the last guy up. We had to run like nine sprints or whatever because of the nine people that didn't execute their job. And he goes, Carson, hit one into that pond, and you don't gotta. None of you guys have to run. And so we're all like, okay, like this is sick. Like, let's see this happen. Like, but no one thought this was gonna happen. Like, we no one's hit one out yet. Like. I haven't seen you hit one out yet. So I'm like, big guy, strong guy, but like, is this really going to happen? I don't know. Throws you an up and in fastball and you just take the thing. And it was these, the, the best moment in practice I've had in my life. It was awesome. So that was, that. that's, that, that's definitely one of my uh, favorite moments of uh, junior college baseball. And then another one about you, um, when you came to tarpool and just barefoot, freezing rain just walking all over the tarp (laughs) that was one of the most ridiculous things i've seen oh yeah yeah i was just trying to earth come on let's try to get the ions in me (laughs) maybe maybe that's why you're so strong um okay so we kind of went through that journey uh let's talk about this year so far your season's almost over uic you guys are playing well um obviously a talented team so how has the how has it been different from JUCO baseball? How has some similarities crossed over? Maybe what did you expect to be different than it is now that you've played? And um, how did you? I, I, if if I'm remembering this correctly, at the the beginning of the season you weren't given an everyday start, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, and now and now I check on Twitter. Carson Roberts batting leadoff. Carson Roberts batting second. Carson Roberts batting third. Carson Roberts batting fourth. So how did that end up happening, and how has the season gone so far? Uh, so yeah, uh, rightfully so. Uh, my ball went very well, very well. We have an indoor facility, and we'll do live scrimmages. From when we get back from winter break all the way up until the first weekend where we play. I did not hit very well. I was hitting like maybe 200, maybe 200. So we have our meetings with our coaches and they're like, we we still have trust in you. 
but we're going to send someone else out in left field, the position I was playing, and uh, we're going to have someone else in DH. We don't know how many starts you're going to get for the year. Uh, you're going to have opportunity. We see you as a pinch hitter, but we want you to know we have trust in you. We know that you have the skill set to potentially be great for us. Wait, so when no. you first hear that from your coaches, what's your immediate reaction? Are you freaking out like, man, I worked this hard and now I'm stuck in this position? Or did you really believe them like, hey, you're going to get an opportunity? And then you're like, in your head, you're like, when I get that opportunity, I'm going to kill it. Definitely a, a heart drops moment because you've worked all this way. You've done everything that you've done. You've just done everything and your heart just kind of drops. But at the same time, you like, there's no reason to fight it. It's the truth. Like you, you obviously put in the effort, but the execution just wasn't there. Right. There is no disagreement. There's no argument. I, Total, a hundred percent agreed with them. I was like, yeah, no, like I, I get it. First weekend, uh, first day didn't play. Second day, I get a pinch hit opportunity, and I worked a walk and ended up scoring. And the very next day, they're like, hey, we're gonna have you in left field. I was like, sweet, let's do it. Uh, went two for three, and then. Very next game, didn't play. I was like, all right, you know, that, that's fine. You know, lefties on the mound, no confidence. You're not, I don't want to say confidence, but you have better guys sued for lefties. Get that. Game after that, played. I actually think at the end of that game, got a pinch opportunity, pinch hit opportunity, had a, just a line drive straight at the left fielder. Next game, played, and then the, kind of the rest is history, where every day was DH. And then we unfortunately had our right fielder get injured, put me in the in left field. They're like, you know what? You, you can play left field. You know, it's not very pretty. And but you get the job done the, with a thousand feeling percentage. <laughs> he gets the job done. That's that's all <laughs> they ask for. That's I would say the standard gets the job done. He he's probably here for his bat. He swings it uh exceeding expectations and kind of the rest is history now at the division one level highest level of baseball that you've ever been at in, mm -hmm. in your life obviously i mean that's self-explanatory yeah it's i think being the fact that you are a juco guy i think that had to have changed how your transition was to the division one level so i kind of want to hear what you think about Juco helped you to where you are now. You're obviously you're having a ton of success, especially your first year at Division One. Like that's not easy at all. Like that can't go over like that's impressive. Like that doesn't just happen. Um so how has JUCO helped you? And kind of if you went straight from high school, do you think I mean obviously it would have been different, but how do you think it might have been different? I always kind of teeter tot with uh myself with this which way would have been better because obviously if i went straight out of high school say to a division one i don't think i would have played a whole lot and i wouldn't have gotten any experience and then i feel like that pressure would have kind of just built and built and built on to when i finally got my first opportunity and i don't know like i said i love pressure i I embrace it, but there definitely is, there's a breaking point for everyone where too much pressures is counterproductive with Juco, especially going or going to a Juco where there was pressure or a perfect mix of pressure and opportunity kind of built me stronger. I would say to anyone that is going through the recruiting process uh, in high school, going the JUCO way is a lot smarter. Because at the end of the day, you want to play baseball. You want to help your team win on the field. It's it's more of like a culture shock almost going straight from high school to Division One, where if you are going to a good, uh, of like a respectable D1 out of high school, odds are you're not going to play. And yeah. the fact of the matter is, in high school, you were probably the star. 
So mm-hmm. going from that to a bench role, a pinch hitting role, maybe never seeing the field at all in your yeah. freshman year, that's a big difference as opposed to going to a junior college, getting some experience, getting better as a baseball player, learning a lot, and sort of that – it's a different mentality playing junior college baseball. It is. It is. You like it, going Just like going back to it, it getting the on-field experience – you can do anything in practice to try to replicate what it is on um, for like an in-game situation, but it is a hundred percent different, different. And you can attest to this where being on the field versus another team, there's a different type of feeling that goes into it that you 100%. just, you can't replicate. Yeah. I think knowing that you had the opportunity to learn, grow, get better, had experience, you were playing, the year before and in a college level it's different than high school you performed really well it's not like you got some crazy opportunity that you didn't deserve going straight into a division one program out of um, a good junior college like we had success so I think your journey even though it 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 took you two colleges to get to the division one level like that's not normal usually usually it's either some guys will be one college for one year one college for two years three college I know people that have been to four colleges like it's all different I think different situations can help make or break someone's career like you you never know you could have it could have been your first year in college and you could have not played at all or had the pinch hit opportunities that you had if coach Leahy doesn't reach out to you you don't go to COD I would say odds are UIC wasn't going to find you because way different from Arizona like it's a whole lot further so Obviously, a different opportunity might have came, but you don't know. So, obviously, I like to say everything happens for a reason because you never know what's going to happen. And if you continue to work hard, like you said, you reach that breaking point in November or whatever. If you just said, hey, I'm quitting now, you wouldn't be where, you are, where you're at now. You yeah. continue to work hard and to get to where you are. So I think that's admirable. And anybody watching this right now should take that. And maybe times are tough. Maybe you're not performing as well as you'd like to or anything in life if you keep pushing forward keep doing your thing have a good strong work ethic as well as mentality and you're you can have success down the road it could be 50 years from now but you never know yeah and like like said for me like that breaking point like i was hanging the cleats up on next year Mm -hmm. like that can't take you away from this year like, I, I couldn't give up on you guys and on COD and all that we were striving to do. Like, we still had a job to do. I still was hoping to, you know, contribute to our success. Right. You know? And that wouldn't have happened if you just gave it gave up, up and said, Yeah, totally. I'm done. So, I want to ask you, all the experience you've had, ups and downs, being a regional bowler um what's a piece of one the biggest piece of advice you can give to people that you haven't said already that are trying to move on to a a higher level or just trying to get better at something how can they sort of put themselves in the best position to succeed big question but i'm sure you got a good answer no people suck people truly do suck you're going to cross paths with a bunch of people. But, and a huge but here, you're going to cross paths with a lot of genuinely nice, supportive people. And those are the people that you want to be around and you want to learn from. Those are the people that you bring on to the next college mentally. That is where you learn a bunch of ways of go about your business, it might even for me a little bit about like my batting stance. I learned a little bit from uh, this guy named Lucas at Mesa, where he did something with his hands that I love. Took that with me. You're gonna learn a lot about good people, learn a lot about bad people, but you take away from the good people for the future. I absolutely love that you said that because. I most people are going to go throughout their careers, whatever it be, 
and sort of maybe they might take a thing or two, whatever. I love that you mentioned that you took a specific thing from somebody and you're like, hey, I'm going to implement. I, I like what you did with your hands. I like how you set your feet, whatever. I want to try that. I think I'm going to have success. I I was fortunate enough to be behind. Okay, I would have loved to play. I would have loved to get yeah. an opportunity, right? But I was behind you and Cliff in left and right field. And Cliff Vickers, shout out. Um, maybe we get him. He was on the podcast, though. We can get him on again. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> um, but so I was behind you two, and I got to sort of watch you guys work. And every day with your work ethic, I mean, there was other guys on the team, too, that weren't in my position group. But just being able to take certain things from you guys and implement it to have success in the following season. Also, like, I'll say A.J. Taylor, guy that's coming to play with you next year, he – one of the best hitters I've seen in my life. Like you, you to get what you gave me yeah. was you. You you're always on time. You're always gonna hit. Like you, I'm not. If someone's throwing 95, I'm like, well, Carson's batting, so it's not gonna be a problem. Like that's something mm-hmm. I took from you. So I saw. I also had to think like, I'm not your size, right? Like I'm not. I'm five foot nine. Like I'm not. I, like I have a different skill set. Like that's just plain and simple. I can't change that. Yeah. Now I look at a guy like. Jeremy Conforti on our team last year, who was also better be on this podcast pretty soon. Um, he He's another guy, massive human. Like He was one of the best hitters I've ever seen, but I can't really take much from that. I can take an approach. Like I, I could really take from your approach because you didn't have an approach of a guy that was your size, in my opinion. So that's what I think made you a great hitter. Now, I mentioned A.J. Taylor. He's more of my size, a little bit bigger still, because I'm, you know, I'm so small. I just oh, is what it up. is. <laughs> but so what I took from him is he swings at the first pitch a lot, and he doesn't mm-hmm. have a lot of strikeouts. He had like three on the season last year, yeah. and he's again one of those hitters that just don't you don't come across very often. And he's had success throughout his entire college career, including this season. So when I first got my opportunities to play, I had to first know my role as. I wasn't going to be the four hitter. Like, that's just not who I am. So I had to know what I was supposed to do. And lucky enough for me, I was in the nine spot. I had to bat behind AJ or, you know, like if, if I was, if I was up, he was on deck. Right. So my job was to get on base any way I could so that he could bat with a guy on. Right. So Mm -hmm. personally, I'm not going to sit there and try to try to walk like that. I think that just defeats the purpose of, trying to get on base like i understand that that works sometimes you need to work a walk but at the same time i'm trying to hit like i'm yes i want the team to win like i said all i wanted to do i get frustrated with myself when i leave aj stranded on deck right so yeah that's why i love that you mentioned you take from some something from someone i would watch aj hit every single day and i'm like i need to figure out what he does to where I can implement that into my swing and have success myself. So what I took from that is he swings at the first pitch so often. And now he gets a lot of off-speed pitch, pitches first pitch, being the leadoff hitter, a guy everyone knows can hit, everyone in the area, region, they all know how good of a hitter he is. So he's not getting yeah. fastballs right down the middle, right? But now sure. I'm in the nine spot, and I'm taking that mentality. I was batting like 600 in the first week of the season because yeah. I would swing at that first pitch fastball because I knew I was getting a fastball. I had his mentality – getting easier pitches to hit and now i was able to work my thing so that's why i love that you mentioned you take something from someone else as you move along from your teammates from your coaches from friends family whatever it doesn't have to be just in baseball as well you learn from something from someone else every single day and that can get that can build on get to where you are now and have all that success that you wanted in the past and 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 going off of some a couple things you said the best two strike approach is not getting two strikes. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. If you can hit it and you can handle it and you're on time for it, swing at it. Mm-hmm. There's no reason why you shouldn't. You think you're gonna get a better pitch of something in your plan in your zone? Probably that's, not. That's ludicrous. Right. Also, so you said that you weren't a, a four hitter. I, if you look at my stats, I. I don't have a whole lot of extra base hits. I'm not a guy that's going to put it out of the park. That's but, that's why I mentioned I think you have the swing mentality of someone that isn't your size. Because a lot of guys your size pull off, let's hit a home run. Totally. But the reason of a four hitter is to get RBIs. Mm-hmm. Now, I like I said, I don't look at my stats. I 
I feel very confident that I have a whole lot of RBIs. They put me at the four spot for I don't know how many games, but they did. And I joked, I was like, oh, like, why, <laughs> why are you guys doing this? I, <laughs> I don't hit the long ball. But it made sense was if the guy's on second and third and you guys see a ball in play, I can do that. I can right. hit a line drive back backside to score one, maybe two runs. That's the that's the true point of a four here is to to just drive in runs to score. Right. Right. So to say that you're to say you're not a four hitter, I think. I, I don't I don't agree with. Right. <laughs> if you have that lead off mentality of, hey, I'm going to give a good at bat. I'm going to I'm going to do some damage to this ball. What the? <laughs> Sorry. Just falling apart. Lights. <laughs> if you give the mentality of, I'm going to do damage to this ball, I'm going to put it in play, you're going to score runs. Right. So I, I think you actually are the the perfect four hitter. <laughs> right? I think, I think it depends on a strategy of a coach. You know what I mean? Like if they if they can take someone with that skill set and say, "Hey, this is what we're doing," or like, because I even think, what did you bet? You betted for a decent amount last year, four or two, right? Yeah, it's either four or two. So you sort of had that role, and even this year we have a guy, a lefty bat as well, Jason, who isn't the stereotypical hit a home run guy. So if you can get a line drive consistently, like you, I think you can hit anywhere really. Um, yeah. So I mean that 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 totally depends on strategy of a coach, but no, I I definitely see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you got anything else you'd like to say or any words of wisdom to end this thing with, go ahead. I actually have a question for you. Oh, let's go! So First one ever. Brothers. This is like in Step Brothers where they go in and they're like, "We're gonna ask you the questions." What's <laughs> I your just saw that security? clip the other day. Yeah. <laughs> um. Last year at Myrtle Beach, I remember this. I was on third base. You scored me. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> it was against Penn State. There is a teams. bunch of Penn States. Yeah. I want to say it started with a D. Dubois. Du Dubois. It, it was either. Yeah, it was probably them. We played two it, of them, I think, but yeah. Yes. It is, I think it was Dubois. Uh, we're about to slaughter pinch hit opportunity and i think you got two strikes i can i can take you to this through this whole situation how it came about so all right i want to hear your situation and then i want to tell you the situation that was going on in my ear from bobby wilson <laughs> I, I would okay. love to hear that i would love to hear that okay so i'm still so like knowing your role right i was mm. there on video all the time like i was taking video and I was happy to do it. I wanted to help the team as much as I could, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there still doing it. It's cold, too. Like, <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason, Merle Beach, it was getting cold, right? And I'm sitting there doing nothing for all game. And we're in the last inning of our last game. We're up by a ton. Like, so he was getting ready to put in some guys that haven't got the chance to play yet, right? Yeah. So he puts in three guys who all – I believe they all hadn't played up until that point – and I think I was the only one left out that hadn't played. And I'm like, man, sucks, but like, whatever. I'm still doing whatever. And I, I can remember this. I don't know if it was bases loaded the time they came in, but there, at some point, whatever, the first guy flew out to right, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly. He flew out to right. It might have advanced the runner. The second guy. Struck out. The second guy. No, no, no. The second guy walked. No. I believe. Matt, yeah. it was Matt Saria. Yeah, he walked. I, I the, trust me, trust me. I I know this. <laughs> he <laughs> will. I'll ask him, and we'll we'll yeah. get we'll get. Uh, I'm I'm, hundred percent. He walked. I promise you, he walked. So the and I'll tell you why. Because if he struck out, I wouldn't have got to bat. Because then another kid came up, on. Who was so then our third string catcher who didn't get to play because we had two real good catchers. Yeah. He came up to he bat, right? Right. He struck Turned out. out ugly. <laughs> I love Grant. <laughs> he hit like bad. a seven hundred foot home run, like foul. <laughs> yeah. He yes. smoked the ball foul and then struck out. But so 
getting back to that point. So because Matt walked, there was only one out with him coming up. And when he came up to the plate, Wilson's like, what do I do? Because there's no one on deck because they thought there would be three outs and then whatever. So yeah. he's like, so then Zunk, favorite, love that guy. He's the reason why I got in the lineup this year. Love him. He, he, he's the best. Um, he's like, Sebastian, grab a bat. And I'm like, shoot, like someone take this iPad. I got to go. Yeah. Like, I'm like freezing, like whatever. Grab my batting gloves, which are in the bottom of my bag because I haven't hit. Like I'm just scrambling to get my stuff. And then I'm like, please just don't swing at the first pitch. And like, I'm not ready. But um, so I'm getting on deck. I get a couple swings in. He strikes out. Now there's two outs. And we're, I think it had to have been one run to slaughter, right? Yep. Yep. So you were the I, – I didn't know you were on third base. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but so then I'm up there, and this guy, everyone's saying he's throwing slow, but I'm like, shoot, I haven't seen live arm in a minute. Like, is it going to feel that slow? Like, yeah. whatever. And um, so I go up there. I think first pitch – I was first pitch swinging. Like, that. I wasn't in that mentality yet, like that I mentioned I am this year. But yeah. I, I, I was like, I have to swing if it looks good. And I believe it might have been a curveball. If I remember correctly – it might have been an off speed because I swung straight through it. It, it was either yeah. an off speed or it was just a fastball I was super early on. And I'm like, shoot, man, I, this is my one opportunity. I gotta, yeah. I gotta do something here. And then next pitch, I like, I want to say it was a low fastball, and I was able to just hit it up the middle. And I had nothing behind it, but I was like, I just had to put a bat on the ball. I wasn't gonna go up there and strike out. I couldn't do that. Like I, no. that would have been that whatever. But hit it up the middle, whatever game over we win good way to end the end the end the trip but i need to hear i need to hear what you were about to tell me <laughs> so like i said so like i said i was i was with coach wilson and i'm sorry if bob's listening to this i thought i'm exposing him <laughs> I, I don't i don't think he's listening I to this but <laughs> remember well <laughs> i like i said i remember the the pinch hits Pinch hit opportunities from uh, that game, <laughs> and I just remember that <laughs> there's a, a lot of cuss words through <laughs> a lot of the other at bats, and I remember that you did swing through one of the uh, one of the pitches. I didn't know it was the first one. I think it was. And, I could be wrong, but I'm. I think it was. And, I could be wrong. Be honest with you. That's what I remember. I thought it was a fastball. I thought it was it a fastball. It might have been. It might have been. I don't know. I I, I guess I could pull the video. You black right? out in those moments. Right. Like, I, I don't remember no more. Totally. And I remember, <laughs> I, so you, like, you do your normal, like, you anticipate a pass ball, run back. And he, I, he looked at me. I was like, I he was like, that's a good swing. And he gives the typical, (laughs) I was like, that's a good swing. Like, and then you hit it up the middle. And I remember mobbing you at first base. Like that was sick as I won't cuss, but that was, (laughs) that was sick. I remember that. But my question to you is, do you think you should deserve more pinch hit opportunities from that? You so that was in your freshman year. Yeah. So the the toughest thing about that was after that, I'm like, all right, I'm going to have another opportunity at some point. Like I have to, like, there's no way I don't. Right. Like I yeah. got my opportunity and I did something with it. Yeah. So again, I, I, at, at no point was I like, I need to play over Carson. At no point was I like, I need to play over Cliff. And especially because I had so much respect for you guys, there was no way I would have even been like, there's there's just no chance. I, I love you guys. Like, there's no shot I would have been like, I deserve to be playing over these guys. So, but to that point, there was a game here or there maybe in a doubleheader against a bad team where I'm like, all right, I'm ready. Like, let's go. I'm I'm, I'm expecting to get a shot. I'm always expecting to get a shot because if you're not, then you're going to be not ready. So yeah. the entire season, I mean, it would have been nice to know early on that I wouldn't have had an opportunity again because then I could have either redshirted or something like that. But I'm grateful for the fact that 
everything went the way it was like I can't change it and I don't want to change it because you never know how things could have turned out but so to to answer your question yes I sort of was expecting to get another opportunity or two um but it didn't work out that way obviously we know that now but I was always ready for it I was like go, we like we never knew the lineup until the game times so, right. like right on the game so I would go up to the lineup uh not in it whatever I'll go with film like whatever I'll do what I can um, that's just who I was, but it, it definitely would have been nice. I know talking to you and other guys, they would have been like, you guys were saying, I thought maybe you should have had an opportunity, more opportunities, yeah. um, after that. So it, it's nice knowing that your teammates think that way, but at the same time, I always knew there was no shot with, with that. And even so going to, I don't know how much I want to say, given this is going on the internet, but, <laughs> but the fact that in the fall, day one, in scrimmages I got opportunities, but then we go out and played, um, I think it was Brian Stratton and then McHenry. In game one, I was expecting, it was our starting lineup, right? Like, mm-hmm. we were expecting our starters to go out there. And I look at the lineup, I'm like, I'm not on there. I'm like, shoot, man, like, I worked hard. Like, I I know I work hard. Like, I, I, I don't think there's another person that works as hard as me, and no one can tell me otherwise. But that's just my mentality. So I see that and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, there's no way, right? Like I, I worked this hard and then whatever. So I don't play that first game. And the guy that played over me has had, I'd say five at bats on the season now. Um, and sucks for him, whatever. Like I, I'm not going to bash this kid. Like <laughs> well, he played over me, whatever. Maybe he earned yeah. it. And I didn't. Right. So, which was so it was surprising me because one I was expecting to because I was a returner right, yeah. two because I had a good fall up until then so I'm like yeah. there's no way I don't get this start, and he comes out to me before the game and he our head coach and he's like you're gonna get game two so I'm like okay whatever I get to play like me yeah. last year would have been thrilled with that opportunity so I'm gonna be thrilled with that opportunity now, and um, again I don't want to like say too much here i'm still got a <laughs> end of the season to go here but yeah. uh but i remember zunk coming up to me before the second game and i'm 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 a, like i stay focused like i'm not like i'm sort of like you in that way i'm more reserved and like i just focus on me and that's what i can do and he comes up to me coach zunk and he's like i'm doing what i can i'm trying to get you in that lineup and i'm like i appreciate that like i'm just gonna do what I can and give you a reason to back me, right? Yeah. And um, so I go in that game, have one of the best games of my life against an even better team, against McHenry, who's a much better team than Brian Stratton. Oh, yeah. And I remember, I'll remember this game forever because I was, I was mad. I'm like, I need, I need to prove myself here, right? And I thought yeah. I proved myself, but I apparently I hadn't, so I need to prove myself. And um, we get to, I was batting nine, which is where I've been till then. I think that's a good role for me with this team. And I remember getting we're we're pitching really well, right? So against a good team, good hitting team. It's like the first inning, maybe the second inning, and I get a fly ball and I'm like I'm like I I'm, I've, I feel I have confidence in myself that I'm going to catch everything near me, right? Yeah. So this fly ball just keeps drifting foul. And I and I wish I had video of this so I can show it on this podcast right now. But I I like reach over the fence, feet up in the air, come back with it. Everyone's going crazy, whatever. I'm like, great start to the game, um, and I have to go in and bat right. And I'm like, well, I have to back that up. I can't just go play defense. I need to hit too. So yeah. first at bat, base it up the middle. Our first our team's first hit of the game. I'm like, all right. If you don't think I'm good enough now, like what can what else can I do? Right. Exactly. And I keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. And I, I got the opportunity to play the entire game because I didn't play in the first game, which I was, I was grateful for. Uh, yeah. I ended up playing left and right, I believe. And then, so I ended up the game either two for two or two for three. I don't remember. I think it was two for two, probably a walk or something. Made, played really good defensively. I was like, and this was, I, it's probably one of our last games of the fall. Um, and I was like, this has to be my opportunity. So now I go into, so now we're playing against you guys, right? Yeah, we get a good opportunity to play against a really good program, and 
everyone's excited. You guys got a sick field. You guys, whatever. Everything's yeah. it's, it's fun to play a Division One program. Obviously, yeah. you're on the team, so everyone loves that. Every, all the guys that knew you, um, and so I'm ex- I'm I'm not really sure if I'm getting an opportunity. So I pulled my quad um, shortly after that game, and so I wasn't playing for a few weeks, mm. and I didn't get a game before that UIC game. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna play, whatever. And similar situation, Zunk comes up to me. He's like, are you healthy? And I'm like, yeah, like, I, I can play. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm not going to say no. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah. <laughs> and and he's like, good, because um, what he told me, and I hope he's not, and I hope he's not fabricating anything, or I'm taking it wrong or whatever, because it's going on yeah. the internet now. He goes, he's like, well, Wilson gave me one player to start, and I picked you. So, I got the opportunity to start, and I'm like, well, that's sick. Like, one, I'm mad because why the heck wasn't I starting to begin with? Yeah. <laughs> Two, I'm like, yeah. I love you, Zonk. Thanks thanks a ton. Like, I got yeah. the opportunity. That's all I can ask for. And I remember, I mean, obviously that game went down. You probably were six for six, hitting the ball 150 off the bat every single time, which was crazy. But, uh-huh. um, <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, I had a good game. I had two hits. I, I So... I keep rambling like I don't know what I'm talking about but um the first game I had a hit and I flew out to the track and up until that point I think I had one home run in the fall yeah it had to have been at that point because that was the last game and I I flew out to the track I'm like I'm sitting first pitch fastball as a lefty what's that kid's name I played with him in the McCabe I think uh yes uh Mark McCabe Mark McCabe good yeah. kid I liked him he was in, he was on my summer team as well um, I'm like, it's going to be a first pitch fastball. And I was almost shocked that I got a first pitch fastball inside too. And I don't love to pull the ball. And yeah. I just, I'm like a tad bit behind it. Cause I'm not expecting it. And I flew out to the track and I'm like, well, you know what? I can play with these guys. Like I, I'm, I'm confident in myself, whatever. And eventually had two hits on the day. Um, got to face your guy chucking 95, whatever to end the game, which was nice to see. But I, I um, do remember that too. And I was on that thing, dude. I was I was so mad that I struck out on a high fastball because I was first pitch, I believe, either I fouled it straight back or I hit it deep foul territory to left, one or the other, and then I struck out on the fastball. I'm like, man, I'm on this. And that gave me a ton of confidence after that game because I'm like, I can play here. Like, I can do this. So yeah. that's what I needed. I got my opportunity. However it happened, no, I didn't even mention, the reason why I got game two was because I played well in game one. I wasn't supposed to play game two as well. Like yeah. I wasn't, I was the only like starter that wasn't playing in both games. I got that opportunity. They put me in in left field again, which I was grateful for. I had yeah. another hit that game, and the rest is history. So, yeah. I like the mentality that you had with the uh, Bryant Stratton, because that was the same mentality change from me from Mesa for me at COD where. At Mesa, I was when I saw that I was in Ohio. I like was like, oh, like thank you for this opportunity. And then when I like finally like at the in the playoffs at Mesa, it was like more of a like kind of like a fuck you is like about god time. Like right. now you're not gonna try, like take me out. Like this is like I am gonna like kind of I don't want to say show you up, but like I'm, I'm like building show a you home here and missing. I'm not leaving. Right. Like I am. Huh? I said you built a home there and you're not leaving. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and going back to your Brian Stratton, where you make the great catch and then you go hit after. And I kudos to you because I've fallen victim of this where it's like I just did something great. I want to top that. And then mm-hmm. you just go base hit up the middle. Simple. I've seen so many guys, I've been guilty of it too, where it's like, I do something great on defense, go hit. Now I feel like, oh, got to go do the long ball. When right. That, that's not the case at all. Just just be yourself. Right. It was yourself that got you that great catch, that great defensive mm-hmm. play. Just do yourself again. Like, that's all you have to show. Right. No, I, I completely agree. I think me and you are similar mentality-wise, which is why I love having you on this podcast. Um Always love talking about it. Love talking to you. Appreciate everything you've done for me. Appreciate you coming on here. We'll have you again, again and we'll have you on again sometime soon. Um, but yeah, thank you, Carson Roberts, UIC Please. Flame. 
legendary baseball player. Um, good luck the rest of your season, and I'll see you when I see you. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Spotify, if you're coming from Spotify for the first time, maybe. I have no idea how that works, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, but if you're watching on Spotify, if you're watching on the Apple Podcasts, uh, let us know. And head over to the YouTube, too, because Carson made an appearance on the channel as well that you definitely won't want to miss. Oh, Display yeah. of athleticism, as always. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next video.